Welcome back. Now, we are on the tutorial session of the last date of this Gyan one week online course on social capital and health in India. We have completed all 12 lectures. And first, we'll take up the questions related to today's session. <coughs> and then we will move to the presentation part and other kinds of interaction part. So I would like to ask the participants to unmute themselves and ask the questions if they have any question related to this. <coughs> and then I will uh, request Dr. Swalihin Sahab also to respond to, but first let the uh, participants ask their questions. Dear participants, please unmute yourself and ask your questions if you have any. Yes, sir. May I? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Akhtar Hussain from Department of Sociology, Elegant Muslim University. Sir, I have a few uh, observations based on my field work, and I want to have comments uh, from, uh, first of all, from Dr. Salim, and then I have another question that may be most relevant to your discussion. Uh, my first observation is that in his talk, in his deliberations on social capital and health, especially when he talked about the social aspect of health, Dr. Salim, uh, he said that the patients or people suffering from chronic diseases, they need more emotional support, psychological support than what we call medical support or care or medical whatever uh, care from uh, any system. But my observation here is that that uh, I, why I'm asking this, that I have come this this observation from my field work that I observed, I have, as I have uh, uh, studied, I have worked on cancer patients in Kashmir. There I have come to know from their experiences that whenever I talk to them, they said that we are not looked upon by people the way we used to be before our ailments. That is like one of the respondents said that uh, I uh, was a very, um, uh, very much, uh, so, so I, I was getting very much better support in, in whatever way. Now, when after the, my diagnosis of cancer, when uh, I, uh, when people visit me, no doubt they pass comments that are encouraging, but at the same time, they pass such comments that make me feel pity, that make feel, me feel some, uh, something alienated from the uh, rest of the society. So I think uh, what I have observed from there that no doubt this is very important, but at the same time, this has some negative repercussions from psychological point of view, from social point of view. And in your talk, you also talked about this thing, but I want to know from the side of you, sir, uh, from the side of you, I, I just want to inquire, well, is, is it uh, right to say that um, uh, in your deliberation, you said you talked about the, uh, this psychological aspect. What are your comments about this, sir? I am talking about this as, as I have faced these experiences from my field work. I just want to know from your experiences to have some deliberations on this aspect, sir. Okay, got your question. I would, be, I would like to request Dr. Swalin to have to respond to this. When uh, this may be your experience, yes, sir. Uh, it may be or it, it, it is equally, uh, you know, fact that uh, the patients do not want a type of sympathy and all. This is something having the negative repercussions and uh, having on mental and physical health. The thing literally what I was saying that it is not particularly related to the chronic disease. I mean to say that someone literally uh, being affected, some literally having some health issues. So that health issues need some community support, some, some, we need to have some sort of support from, uh, you know, the relatives and uh, our loved ones that we are living with them. So this is something which is equally important because the support that we literally receive from uh, our, uh, you know, the relatives or the family members is really important in the healing aspect, right? It is not a matter of developing some sort of sympathy. Actually, it is a, it is a matter that we literally giving support Mentally, we are supporting. Physically, we are supporting. Financially, we are supporting the uh, you know patient. 
if the patient is feel like to be alienated and associated disassociated from these uh, family members just just like we you know the aids patients and some infection uh, and just like the covid patients so this is they literally had to go to the quarantine type of situation where they need to disassociate, disassociate himself or herself from the community and the society so that disassociation time somewhat literally creating some negative impact on his mental and physical health right and uh, definitely there are many cases there are uh, it is uh, you know actually true that uh, the persons who literally hiv affected person being associated disassociated and having some sort of discrimination because community relatives are not supporting that because of uh, the fear of infection and all so this is also creating some sort of negative impact on the health because he, he feels like that we are being disassociated from the family members and the community so the uh, support system that uh, we need in consoling and we need to have some spiritual support as well the religion or literally having some sort of positive impact mentally and, and physically as well right so this may be the case that uh, you know development developing some sort of sympathy may literally having some uh, this is not a kind of disability actually right mm -hmm. because the patient who is uh, suffering from cancer he is always being trapped he is always literally having this traumatized situation mentally he is always being trapped in the uh, in this handing that what is going to happen with that person he is literally having this uh, fear psychosis of death he is just thinking about his own condition so at, at if the community not intervene into that if the community is not supporting right in that support you know what happens that the patient literally thinking about some uh, something positive and productive the engagement of the patient in the productive task and productive interaction productive type of uh, you know family support literally is, is is having positive healing impact on the patient and no one can deny that support are you getting my point yes sir yes sir i'm getting this is what i mean to say i'm not saying that it is literally more important right yes sir yes sir equally important that we need to have okay. the community support thank yes, you sir. <laughs> Thank you, Akhtar, for raising this point, and thanks, Dr. Swali. Uh, I would like to thank both of you because this is giving me an opportunity to make a further in, 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 uh, intervention over here. Yes, sir. I am expecting that. Yeah. See, basically, we are having a different discourses on healthcare. Right. We need to understand. Right. See, there is a clinical or a curative dimension of health that is generally known as curative health or clinical. Then we have the promotive health. Right. Then we have the preventive health, right? And then we have the rehabilitative health, right? And then we have the palliative care. Five well-known stages or discourse, right? When we talk about a rehabilitative component of the health, then that is different from the curative or the diagnostic, sorry, uh, clinical kind of health. Right? Now, the significance of clinical is different from promotive. Right. If you are talking about nutrition, so should someone suggest that instead of giving the clinical care, <coughs> one should be given the promotive care? Will that operate? No. That Not at all. Where there is a clinical intervention required, that time you have to give medicine and if required, surgery, etc. But that is not undermining the importance of promotive health. Or for that matter, that is not undermining the importance of rehabilitative and the extreme form of that. When cancer reaches to an extreme condition where medical science assumes that, that no further intervention could be made, then at that point of time, basically, the doctor suggests that, okay, if we cannot correct the problem, then at least give some kind of support to the patient, at least some painkillers, can minimize the pain at least, and then comes into picture the palliative. Right. right. So there are different stages, mm. different trajectory. What Saleh himself was saying was that was, and in general, that there is a psychological support required, there is a mental support required, there is a social support. Yes. But can we say that all these things will replace the significance of clinical intervention? The answer is no. Where, where clinical no, sir. is required? That is very important. But once you have made the clinical intervention, after that, when the patient came back from the surgery room, right? After that, 
definitely here yes. you have mental social support kind of thing so we need to place the things in a specific trajectory that will be very helpful for the research context carrying out the research right hope that has uh, satisfied uh, uh, both of you and the uh, participants in general thank you very much right we need similar thought provoking yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah. any other question yes sir it was very 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 thankful i am very thankful to both of you in uh, in refreshing refreshing my uh, observation is no doubt okay. yes i i may i may be talking in particular because i have worked on as particular society particular culture which is different from other parts of the world, other parts of the country that may be particular but i wanted to refresh my ideas about this that's why i uh, raised this in uh, right. now right. second uh, observation that i have second observation that i have with regard to the causation of disease especially when i talk about cancer as i will focus on cancer because i have worked on cancer uh, uh, what i have observed from uh, my field work that is the primary health care system that uh, the primary health care system as far as is concerned especially when i talk about the field when i talk about the area where i have worked that's in kashmir i came to know that it's very much lacking very much there it's not that much facilitated to have that uh, um, uh, that uh, what what uh, what i can say that uh, to realize the goal for health for all uh, what alma ata declaration 1978 uh, emphasizes on that is education that's awareness and something else here i just want to know from the experience of you sir is it right to say that the basic re reason I, i can't say that the primary or whatever but the major part of disease causation is because of the lacking of primary health care because of the Uh, uh, that is what we say that not uh, the uh, health primary health care system is not that much facilitated that much uh, um, uh, it is it, it, the health care workers the specialists there there are there is lack of specialists especially when i talk about cancer got, no oncologist workers got your question uh, see uh, when people go for basically analyzing the quantity quantitative data by applying regression or factorial analysis then they often claim that they have successfully identified the most important variable or most important factor right but when we go for a kind of phenomenological kind of study right a qualitative kind of study then it will not be uh, i think uh, safe for anybody to say that yes i found out the most important cause or most important variable had this be the situation then perhaps we would not have seen the kind of catastrophic impact that covid created right because when things actually happen in the real time right then it is very difficult to identify the actual the main cause of something what we can identify why is this that there are multiple causes and there are multiple variables which are intermingled right and these are all operating simultaneously so lack of primary health care who has identified that that is the most in important intervention <clears throat> unless a society is having a robust primary health care system it cannot think of even ensuring health for all right that means we cannot deny the importance of that but one specific society if the problems are occurring now is that only because of that now this is something that cannot be stated without conducting a basically primary empirical research on that right i am not any such research i will not be in a position to say something but there are multiple factors operate multiple health care facility is definitely one of the most important intervention definitely right there is no doubt about it. unless you have a proper well defined healthcare system you cannot think of because disease is a social phenomenon disease is a cultural phenomenon these things will occur the problem is this that how do you want to combat it? how do you want to address it so the, the the biggest shield that you have is basically the healthcare system because the healthcare system will ensure the prevention the healthcare system system will ensure the basically the, the curative part right along with that even the promotive health basically 
the, the, the significance of nutrition. How do we know about nutrition? Had those uh, medical science research not been conducted, we would, we would not have been in a position to talk about the importance of or significance of nutrition, right? So, of course, the medical science is conducting the research. But along with that, there are other supportive things which also operate. But at the same time, if you are witnessing a discrimination in a medical institution, then the medical science cannot give you a, a solution to this problem, right? Because there are behavioral there are behavioral things. So when you have the behavioral aspect involved, when you have the psychological aspect involved, when you have the mental cognitive part associated with a the problem, then that kind of intervention is required. Now, keeping aside those things, the affordability factor in itself is a big thing. Now, can we say that this is not an important factor? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So all these factors are important. Yes. There are certain circumstances, some of these factors become more instrumental and under other circumstances, those other factors may become more instrumental. I, I won't suggest you to, 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 to inquire about the most important because that is basically a kind of a mirage. What is the most important? Because these will keep on varying. Right? Yes. Sir. So thank you. That is, we can say about the, the that's probable causes, probable causes. No, no, these are one of the causes. Don't say probable. I'm not saying probable. You, because after conducting the research, you cannot say the probable causes, right? After conducting the research, you can find out four right. variables. So you are saying that these four, five, six, seven variables are responsible for it. Now, if you want to see out of these six, yes, which one is the most important, then you may have to conduct a separate study for that. It's an ongoing process. Right, sir. Right. Maybe right, you, sir. you have submitted your doctoral work, right? Maybe after two years or three years, you think, you start thinking that, okay, that time I identified those many variables. Now I want to see more precisely out of these, which one is the most important, right? right. You go for a postdoctoral research. And that is why need this, the postdoctoral kind of research. And then that is why we think of research as a lifelong process, right? Because things keep on changing, evolving. Yes. No single research can ever say that, well, I've given a full stop, no more finding could be there, right? And when we go for basically yes. the methodological part, and especially the uh, ontological part, then the assumptions on which the research is primarily based on those are being challenged, right? The assumption right. deals with certain assumption, but over a period of time, the assumptions, the reality that we consider as reality, our understanding of that, that reality is getting challenged at ontological level, right? Mm. So research is an ongoing process. It's a dynamic, it's evolving and yes, these are the things which basically operate simultaneously. It is multi-layered as well. It's multi-layered. Uh, great, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you both of you, sir. Hmm. Yes. Any other question? No, sir. Thank you. This time I don't okay, have fine, any fine after. Fine. There are other participants also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please mute yourself. There are other participants. Now, participants, let me know. Let us know if you have any question. Otherwise, we will go for the presentations. So, who are there to make the presentations? Parasha? Page? Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. They will make their presentations. We'll start with Farah. Okay, 
सारा का सब विटामिन डी और दो चीज बोली थी उन्होंने विटामिन और ठीक है फराज फराज को कोस फराज डू यू नीड फराज प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ डी एस प्रेजेंटेशन मोड यस यस सर आई हैव अ पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन ओके 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 वी आर मेकिंग यू कोस्ट श्योर सर सर सॉरी सर आई देयर वाज अ डिस्टरबेंस इन बिटवीन दिस डोंट डिस्टर्ब नाउ Okay, Farah, you can uh, share your PPT. Okay, sir. So, uh, kind. Uh, can you please help me out how to uh, connect it with uh, this i don't know how to you i'm not not uh, so much of technical uh, hand that is why okay it will be very difficult you just click at the share screen the green tab and then you will be seeing now keep your uh, document open here okay sir so yeah it's visible now okay so give me a moment please yeah yeah sir is it visible now yes it is visible thank you sir uh so my name is dr farashraf i am an icssr post doctoral fellow in the department of sociology university of kashmir under the supervision of professor anita shafi basically my topic uh, for today is exclusion of socially ostracized gender but this is a case study of kashmir uh we have been talking throughout our past and present that we require gender equality equity and empowerment but yet we are still facing or we are still seeing gender discrimination which is still existing and persisting in today's times when we are talking about the modern contemporary period and when we talk about third gender or when we talk about the transgender establishing third gender as a separate identity it's it's a very big step to take it's a very significant step when we talk about this so for uh, my uh, introduction will be but first of all i would like to talk about the objectives of my study my objectives for the study is to put forward the problems and hindrances faced by the transgender community in kashmir to review the rights and highlight the discriminatory attitude based on gender and sexuality and lastly a set of recommendations in order to address how these problems would be combat when we talk about human rights violation as a basic principle of social justice so for when we talk about indian context uh, a, a, towards the transgender it's a very different context when we see what we see in kashmir kashmir has a very different ideology or a kashmir the kashmiri people have a very different context towards looking at third gender people especially third gender people i will not talk, i will only talk about the third gender because my specialization or i will talk about third gender as a whole because my pdf is uh, revolve around this thought only theek but when we talk about the introduction as a whole i will say that the total population of transgender is estimated of around 4.88 lakh out of which 4137 transgenders are in the whole ut of 
Jammu and Kashmir when we talk about the 2011 census. So far, we don't have the present scenario of 2021 uh, about the transgender number. What is the exact number of transgenders in 2021 as per the tw uh, 2021 census when we record as 2021 census, we don't have the exact number yet to be known what is their proportion in Jammu and Kashmir. In uh, April 20, uh, 2024, the Supreme Court in India gave them a recognition in law. But when we talk about the state of Jammu and Kashmir, they are living as ostracized and marginalized community. Our society in Kashmir is not only patriarchal, it's also heterosexist and transphobic there. When we talk about contemporary modern times, we talk about so many modern things, but still we are lagging somewhere way behind than what we talk about the modern modernity. The concerns regarding gender and sexual minorities. Yesterday, one of the uh, one of the participants here was talking about we don't talk about the menstruation. That is true indeed. We don't talk about menstruation, though it's not an uh, not a such issue that we cannot talk about, but there are certain still uh, certain still con uh, conditions concerns where we don't talk about certain human beings as well. We don't like to talk about these people, these problems, and we are not in a position to take care of these issues. When we talk about the concerns of gender and sexual uh, minorities, they are always remained unnoticed, unattended, and undiscussed in Kashmir. No acceptance of anyone beyond the male-female gender dichotomy has led to an inclusion of the gender and sexual minorities in Kashmir so far. When we talk about queer as a rainbow in Kashmir, the LGB, particularly the LGB, lesbian, gays, and the bisexuals continues to remain hidden and living an invisible life in Kashmir. Although when we see transgender community, they are relatively more visible, but they are facing multiple layers of abuse. With their visibility, they are facing multiple layers of abuse, discrimination, and harassment in Kashmir. My study is basic, basically based on, this is my methodology. My study is basic, basically based on in-depth interviews. As a, as a primary source of data, it's um, um, the sample size has been taken 30 and uh, the conduct of my study has been in the Kashmir region only. Uh, so <clears throat> what my findings say, uh, my findings, first of all, uh, reveal this, that social recognition of transgender is very low in Kashmir, and so is their visibility. Non-acceptance in the society renders no dignified space. While we talk about human rights, when we talk about human universal human rights, we have right to live, we have a basic right, that is right to live with dignity. But when we see these transgender people roaming around in Kashmir, in Kashmir streets, no acceptance in the society renders no dignified space for them. They carry a social stigma of unacceptability. They're usually forced to act and behave as men against their gender in order to fit in the prescribed and perceived gender norms, which becomes the basic basis of their identity crisis, gender discrimination, and human rights violation. They're treated as a source of disgust and perennial shame, as is evident. Basically, uh, uh, when we talk about South Asian prayer lands, they are called hijras, but in Kashmiri local prayer lands, we, we call them lands, which is in uh, itself a derogatory term to be called, uh, to be called as. And when we uh, call them as lands in our day-to-day -day conversations, it, gen it then reduces in itself uh, to just a butt of indecent jokes. As their identity, they're still forced to write either as male or female against their gender. Thus, they cannot avoid the predicament of their identity crisis. Uh, then their childhood phase. Their family 
uh, brutally behaves with them very brutally in order to pattern their life as per their choices they're considered by their families as abnormal people uh, in comparison to their normal straight or heterosexual siblings they face extreme inequality in terms of affection love care respect education healthcare facilities festivities or occasion they experience ill treatment and isolation from family siblings and relatives they are either lastly they are either pushed away from their families the families themselves abandon them or else they have no choice other than running away living uh, and shelter in the valley they are confined to the secluded areas and are forbidden from appearing in the public living in the secluded areas especially which are far from the city hub but located in the periphery they mostly settle down in unconstructed houses or they live with substandard life in rented accommodation this also deprives them of the basic necessities of life like good food pure water sanitation healthcare facilities due to scarcity of water supply they face problems in washing cooking drinking bathing this further adds the issues of waterborne diseases and hygiene related matters when we talk about education there there is no inclusivity for them in the admission criteria in schools colleges universities because of which they lack the accessibility to white collar jobs as well when we talk about the occupations hijra's traditional occupation mostly is match making or singing and dancing but in today's times both of these are declining because of either matrimonial sites choice marriages or if we are talking about the basic entertaining bands are coming up in the limelight so their occupation is even declining nowadays when we okay, talk farha, about farha please come to the concluding part basically we cannot go for more than 7 to 8 minutes right so come to the concluding part please sure sir uh, just uh, give me 2 minutes just when we talk about the religion uh, mostly uh, they are very religious and they perform religious lights but their visibility in the mosques is uh, restricted because of the fact that mosque is predominantly a male space in kashmir uh, this was basically about the health what i wanted to enlighten sir uh, because in the previous days we were talking about the health uh health patterns health issues health problems what they face when they uh, see the health um, or medical treatments they are not provided in any kind of health entitlements they are not given proper medical treatments lack of adequate medical care uh, is what they face when they go to the government hospitals this is what a, a, a transgender has stated to me uh there are many uh, transgenders who say this when they go to the government hospitals doctors ask them to show their genital areas to see what they have trans people are either told to leave or are treated as aliens there are no cures for trans people only for men or women doctors will say they are they will only serve women or men the most important thing is after their the death even they are not spared because in kashmir we have the ownership of the graveyards but they don't have any place to be buried even peacefully and we have witnessed so many uh, so many instances with this but hardly does anyone truly understand or care about their problems thank you sir thank you very much for ashraf dr for ashraf uh, i have to appreciate you a lot because you widened the horizon of this discourse right thank you sir about health and social capital then till now we didn't address the issues related to transgenders or the queer community right dr swalehin has made a short remark on that in his earlier discourses but we had not included this topic in our broader discussion so thank you very much for including this and yes you have very truly pointed out the 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 construction of the gender identity in the specific refers to the transgenders 
and the discourses that you presented basically during the early childhood, during the adolescent, or during the old age, this was truly something very fresh for me. I never read or uh, listened to any discourse related to that. So that is basically uh, very helpful in creating a kind of sensitization also, right? We need to remain sensitive to these kind of differences, the sexual differences or the differences in the sex. If you give me just a minute, uh, uh, yes. can I highlight the few of the recommendations? Uh, yes. Here? Yes. yes, yes, please. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> sir, is it visible? It's not visible now. Uh, you can speak on your own. You can speak. Okay. On. Okay, sir. So, first of all, what is important is uh, we need to be very. The public should be very sensitive. It's it should be very public. Each and every one of us should be very sensitive towards them. We are sensitive of uh, if we have to respect women. We are very sensitive towards the, uh, that. But why can't we give respect to a, a third? gender person change in attitude through education media social practices is must in order to get a changed mindset and attitudes in us public should be sensitized with uh, with the identity of transgender towards gender equality and uh, non-violence of <coughs> them gender equality is not for men and women only it's uh, gender equality means for or everybody for every aspect be be it in the process of socialization be it in the educational system be it in health facilities job opportunities economic resources or political part participation this is very important sir thank you yes uh Farha, can i ask a question yeah sure uh can you please, uh, how would you define the term queer? Because it's a confusing term. How would you perceive it? Uh, basically, queer, it, it's a rainbow term. It, uh, uh, it doesn't belong to only uh, the trans people. Queer in itself belong uh, to seven of uh, the uh, identities. That is lesbian, uh, les uh, LGBTQI and A. When we talk about L, that is lesbian, uh, G is... Um, <coughs> gays, B is bisexual, T is transgender, uh, Q is uh, queer uh, as a whole term, as a rainbow term, A is asexual, and I is intersex. That is why we uh, I mentioned the term people with different sexual orientation, right? Basically, when we are talking <coughs> about queer, we are talking about one, the gender position, and second, the sexual orientation. Position. Yes. So very truly highlighted. I think uh, some of the participants may be interested in responding to your presentation, but we will wait for a minute. Uh, Tej, Tej, are you ready with your presentation now? Tej, are you ready? You have to unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Uh, so, Tez, please make your presentation. Do you need this uh, PowerPoint presentation mode? Uh, sir, I will. Uh, yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, Tez, co host. So, we are making you co-host so that you can make your presentation. Right, sir. Are you not there with your name? Yes. Sir, Tej ke naam se hoon, sir. Tej. Hey, Tej ke naam se to nahi aare. Hospital admin. Hospital admin. Sir, wo shayad actually mera link abhi beech mein kharaab ho gaya I must have taken the other one. To usme kya hoga? Thik hai, to hospital admin se bhi kar dete. Okay. Okay, you can make your, make your PPT presentation page. Our Dr. Iram will follow page, and then uh, anybody else who is interested in making the presentation. Please respond quickly. We will manage the time accordingly.
I had suggested during my lecture that I would like to see someone from Tamil Nadu to make a presentation on Siddha system of medicine. Uh, I'm still looking forward to find someone, right? Anybody can tell us anything, maybe three, four sentences about the Siddha system of medicine, because that is a specific to, I, I won't say that it is remaining really confined to Tamil Nadu, but that is a specific to Tamil Nadu. And we have many participants from that state. Somebody should come forward and volunteer. Sage, what's going on? No. They just stop the PowerPoint presentation and make your oral presentation. Not doing. Maybe he is having some technical issues. Uh, Dr. Iram, if you are there, please start your presentation. Do you need this PowerPoint? Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good Am afternoon. I audible? Yeah, yeah you are audible. Uh, we are making you co-host so that you can share your screen. Okay, you can share your screen now. So is it visible? Or... Is no. it visible? No, no, no. Okay, okay, just wait, sir. Hmm. Now, sir, is it visible? Yes, it is visible. Okay, so today I'm going to uh, give a presentation on the topic that we had to discuss this topic yesterday also and today also that Professor Akram sir has discussed about the nutrition today and yesterday uh, there was that introduction on the food preferences. Now today I'm just going to discuss on the biological factor, the impact of biological factor on food preferences among adolescents. Good, very good. Uh, so here are uh, here are some con uh, contents of my uh, presentation. Actually, this is a kind of a paper that is published by me, and this is a topic uh, of, of my research. Uh, the topic of my research was the uh, factor influencing the food preferences and its effect on the nutritional status among adolescents. And it is uh, one of the um, uh, factors that I had taken in my paper. So first of all, I just want to start with this that human being lives for uh, lives and uh, food plays a very much important role in their life so more than half of earning is spent on the food in underdeveloped countries mainly while less than a quarter is spent by the developed countries so what we eat is determined by our personal preferences as well as other conditions so first of all what is food preferences i just want to uh, uh, say that uh, according to the Cheng. In 2010, food preferences can be defined as a comparison between two or more foods, which leads to choice. It is a particular food over, uh, it's a particular food that over one another and food preferences is an outcome of a complex relationship between the biological tendency uh, and environmental effects. The development of food preferences actually begins even before birth. Uh, in the warm of the mother and likes and dislikes changes as we grow into adults according to the uh, interaction with our environment also. Then next is the fast food preferences. According to Habib et al., uh, uh, fast food refers to the food that are quickly prepared and are sold at a reasonable prices which are easy uh, uh, and alternative to the homemade food. Particularly, fast food is related to an increase of energy intake, fat and uh, fat and saturated fat, which is increases the uh, maybe the reason or the causes of the overweight and obesity also. Now, come to the adolescent. Uh, and another keyword is the adolescent of my um, topic. Uh, the, according to WHO, adolescent is the period of human growth and development that occurs after childhood and before the adulthood that uh, from the uh, from 16 to mainly started from the 11 to 19 years in some there were maybe uh, from 12 to uh, 18 years adolescents like uh, to make their own cho food choices and purchases also want to prepare their own food while the parents can set a good examples for them now food preferences in indian scenario 
uh, frequent consumption of fast food is unhealthy and puts the consumer at the risk of developing the obesity, uh, weight increase, type 2 diabetes, heart and artery, uh, artery diseases. However, uh, the adolescent mainly uh, prefer less, um, um, have to eat more vegetables, fruits and grains that helps to reduce the risk which is associated with the high intake of the fast food products, but they are not consuming as much as they have to eat vegetables and fruits. In our, another study was conducted in the Chennai and Madras Medical College. The findings revealed that 90% of the adolescents rarely eat fruits and 50% of do not want to eat vegetables. Then statical, uh, statics places the Indian the 10th place in fast food per capita spending figures with 2.1% of the annual total spendings. Now, here is some kind of ethnic food preferences in the global scenario in U.S. In university students. American food, 90% of the uh, university students prefer American food, 87% prefer Italian food, and 80% prefer Mexican, then Chinese, French, Thai, and 33% prefer Indian foods than Middle Eastern and Africa. Now, here are some factors that influences the food preferences. The first one is the biological factor, meaning the hunger. When we hungry, when we feel hungry, we can take anything that is easily available to us. Attractiveness, variety and taste. In economic and physical factor, we uh, can talk about the busy schedule, quick service, convenience, awareness of the healthy eating. Then in social factor, TV and advertisement mainly influences the food preferences, peer group, parental control, family food <coughs> habits, etc factor, mood, dieting practices, demographic factor, age, gender, religion, socioeconomic factor. The significance of the study, the present study was the sex, uh, cross-sexual study and it is attempt to the carry out the depth analysis. Uh, mainly the biological factor or uh, we had taken uh, the impact of biological factor on the food preferences among adolescents that is 11 to 14 years from the different schools of Aligarh city. This type of studies is essential for gaining of the understanding of the adolescent food preferences. The objective of the study was to assess the food preferences among adolescent boys and girls and to study the impact of biological factors on food preferences among adolescents. This is the methodology. The sample size was selected by dividing the Aligarh city into four zones and through the stratified uh, uh, random sampling, the Achaltal, Upper Court, Peripheral Ring, Civil Lines area had taken the four different schools from these four zones and total sample size was 400 students. Selection criteria both Boys and girls of the age group of 11 and 16 was taking, normal healthy students was taking, and students residing in a legal city and regular attending. Now, statical analysis, when we talk the statical analysis, the data was statically analyzed, performed by the SPSS 23 to access the food preferences, frequency and proportion was used, and chi-square test was applied, spearman correlation, Coefficient was used to identify the most dominating factor from the combination of the biological factor at the level of 0.05 uh, to 0.01 level. And Spearman multiple uh, regression was used to yield a combination of the factor with the greatest explanation. Here is the uh, composition of the population sample. 400 sample size from which 200 are bo was boys and 200 was girls from the age 11 to 16 years. Next, this table shows the distribution of the adolescents according to the dietary habits. The table, uh, the graph shows that 49% of boys were vegetarian and 57% of bo boys were non-vegetarian, while 51% of girls was uh, vegetarian and 43% was non-vegetarian. Now, distribution of the adolescent meal pattern. Uh, most of the student, most of the adolescent, that is majority, 58% uh, consume their meal or take their meal three times a day, while only 13% uh, of adolescent consume their or uh, take their meal two times a day. Now, this is the food preferences. I had taken the food preferences in uh, fast food. In fast food, I had taken a uh, number of fast food items like pizza, burger, chow mein, uh, cold drinks, uh, then uh, uh, momos cake, pastry, all these kind of items. And the table shows that uh, majority of the adolescent, that is 196 of adolescent prefer the fast food uh, week, uh, once to two times per week. And uh, there is a significant difference found in the preferences of the fast food among boys and girls. 
boys prefer more fast food as doctor iram uh, i have a suggestion instead of presenting the individual tables can you please present this summary of the findings because uh, okay, okay. i think the participants are coming from the background that we all are coming individually from so we all we all would be interested in knowing the summary of the findings okay okay sir i am i am going so these are the three factors that i had taking from the biological attractiveness hunger variety and taste from these factors attractiveness mainly find the most significant factor for the preferences of the fast food now i come to the discussion here i can say that the result of the study indicates that the adolescent prefer more fast food as compared to vegetable fruits milk and meat products pulses and cereals the present study shows that boys preferences for fast food pulses meat products milk products sugar products nuts products more as compared to girls which was also supported by uh, uh, different studies the observation of the present study revealed that adolescent food preferences were dependent on the number of factors such as attractiveness taste variety of the food and is also supported by number study now i want to conclude my uh, study that every every day human being are facing now many food preferences and makes numerous decision on which consume based on the certain criteria the present study shows that the food preferences are strongly associated with the food consumed and the hypothesis was rejected and the significant correlation between food preferences and the biological factor mainly the attractiveness was influenced the food preferences through the regression hence food selection has a quantitative relationship to the amount of the food consumption and the nutrient intake i just want to uh, give some suggestion uh, for the adolescent food preferences of those who are preferring more fast food that schools and colleges should organize specific health education programs dietary guidelines and affect the Uh, campaigning to address the unhealthy lifestyle of students and Im to improve their health then school should include health and nutrition as a subject in their school curriculum then make nutritious food tastier attractive convenient and easily available at the school outlets then parents teach and motivate their children to eat nutritious and healthy food when they are here thank you thank you very much dr iram a uh, very nice presentation and very coherently presented arguments you have very uh, convincingly argued that that food selection is one of the important determinants of the uh, nutritional state that people basically end up with and i think that this study actually uh, tells us about the background under which Uh, some sort of over nutrition is actually uh, constructed in our uh, first lecture basically we discussed that that malnutrition is not necessarily about under nutrition this is also about the over nutrition kind of thing because that creates some kind of disproportionate allocation of the nutrients to the body right and food selection yes, definitely playing a very important role so thank you very much for uh, okay. Yeah, doctor Swalini wants to respond to this. Sir, no, sir. Yes. Uh, doctor Ram. Yes, sir. I'm I'm eager to know out of all the preferences, uh, which one is the most important dominant preference? Uh, as you, yes, sir. Slides, keeping in mind the paucity of time. Uh, attractiveness. The from the biological, from the biological factor, and actually in my research, the most dominating factor was the culture, and religion. Culture and religion. Yes, we we understand this thing. Basically, yesterday I had also made a reference to the cultural capital, right? That yeah, yes, sir. That the cultural capital is playing a very important role in these things, and we need to make intervention which are basically taking into consideration this theoretical outcome, right? Because unless we try to address the barriers, we will not get into the kind of uh, outcome that we are basically looking forward, right? So that is why. Yes, capital is there acha the one question that i would like to ask actually both of you uh doctor yes, as well as dr ashraf both have completed their doctor degree both have some kind of maturity in their uh, research understanding this question goes to both of you can you look at the concept of social capital from the perspective of your research i would like to see your comments on this because this is what we have been talking about 
right? We understand the health aspect, but because we are dealing with two separate situations, I think that the, the notion of social capital could be very, uh, say, intellectually challenging if you look at the queer community or if you look at the problem from the perspective of the queer community. Can you respond to this, uh, Dr. Asraf, first? And then we will come to uh, Dr. Hiram to match your researchers. Sir, uh, uh, can you please repeat the question, please? My question is this, that both of you talked about a specific situation, right? Which is engaging the cultural aspects. Now, how can we look at that problem or that situation from the perspective of social capital? Or in other words, can social capital, the understanding of social capital make any difference in the situation? First of all, I will say that when we talk about the social capital, it can make a difference in uh, <coughs> for the queer community as well. And when we talk about the um, as where, uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Iram has rightly talked about, when we talk about the social capital with reference to the queer, yes, it can make definitely a, a difference because when we see uh, the overall attitude or if we see the overall uh, spectrum of the social capital towards the queer, at times, uh, uh, when uh, we talk about the queer as a community, uh, it is that uh, can play a positive role. But the thing is, uh, it is who we we as a straight or heterosexual people who has to incline a kind of awareness towards social capital with regards to the queer. This is what I can say with this. But uh, when uh, I talk about the uh, social capital. Uh, in this um, uh, in this course, uh, in the, these these days, a uh, one week course, this has truly enlightened me as a, a affair when we talk about this as a course. But uh, there is yet to link between the I have not yet linked the social capital as a whole to be very honest and to be to be very true to myself and to my research as well. I have not yet related the social capital sphere with my research. I am yet to work on it. So I'll work on it and then I can uh, deliberate my uh, uh, reference with this. Uh, thank you, Dr. Farah. I would like to quickly respond to, see, when we look at social capital in a summary, in a summarized form, we say that it is a network of relationship. You know, <laughs> yes. that's what the queer community is actually deprived of is this network of network relationship. So I think that this community would be the most deprived community in terms of possession of social capital. So, social capital. Right. So yes. this aspect we can very uh, easily identify. And I think that will definitely help you in widening the scope of your research. This is your ongoing research. You can definitely include the social capital dimension. They are certainly the most deprived community as such, right? True, sir. Come back to Dr. Iram. Thank Dr. you, sir. Iram, do you think that that the social capital or the network of social relationship is responsible in causation of the kind of food choices that the adolescents are making? Yes, sir, definitely, because society is one of the reasons for making the faulty food choices as the uh, adolescents and mainly the children are interacting with the society very much and uh, they, are, they uh, form a, some of the role model for them, like TV and advertisement. This is also a part of the society. So they are mainly uh, interacting with the TV and in, uh, advertising of the such unhealthy food. Even they know the side effects of these unhealthy foods, but they are more uh, uh, think, interact with these kind of... Uh, advertisement so this is a kind of a thing so we can say that uh, uh, awareness about the nutritional deficiency and mm -hmm. the malnutrition implication uh, should be there in uh, for the adolescent mainly because this kind of uh, age group that are mature as compared to the uh, younger uh, children so they can uh, know about what is malnutrition what is the nutritional deficiency what are the faulty eating habits and how they can make a good food choices or healthy food choices at their workplace mainly. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, there is one doubt raised by Tariq Anwar. We will come to that. But before that, I have one small announcement. Uh, we would like to hear Dr. Tulika, then Tahzeeb, then uh, Srija, then Dr. Shivani, and then uh, Umar and Nusrat, right? And whosoever has basically uh, communicated his or her views all through these days, because this is the last session. And now we have already completed basically the, the design discourse, right? So I would like to listen from all of you, your final remarks or observation. So keep your uh, remarks ready, of, of course, uh, from Akhtar also. So all the active participants who kept that tutorial part alive for last six days, we would like to hear from you the concluding remarks. And uh, if Tej is ready with his presentation, we would like to listen to Tej. Satham Hussain has also submitted his assignment and a very good assignment. Satham, would you like to uh, present your assignment in two, three minutes? So uh, I want to listen from Tej and if possible from Satham Hussain also. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, I just want to appreciate your uh, this uh, program. Yeah. And uh, I just want to five to uh, five minutes for the appreciation or for giving some kind of a thanks to all of you. Uh, even I give just now or after the ending of the yeah, after, uh, uh, after this yes let, let us talk about uh, let us listen to satram or tej first then we will come to okay, you okay 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 thank you if they are interested satram yes please so this is tej sir um, okay I, tej. I can sir i am not able to present the ppt because of some problem i think with the but okay, i will present it over Okay, sir, fine. Present. Make, make an oral, oral presentation. Sir, what I'm trying to understand is how can we utilize social capital in improving the performance of an organization? And I am at a very initial stage where I'm still exploring, reviewing literature and trying to understand the theories of social capital. Now, the initial part when I had done there are several theories of social capital, most of which have started from Coleman, then Budo, Putman, Burt, and now Neen also has come up with social capital uh, theories. Now, one basic element of across all these theories is the social structure and a network, which actually is the framework for all these theories. In Coleman, he actually talks about this uh, social structure and a durable network, uh, which is the primary understanding of a social theory. Whereas Budo talked in terms of the quality and quantity of the social ties, which are part of the structure. And when we compare it with uh, Putman, he takes it further and he talks about participation of either in the form of uh, people or groups who together form a social capital and Bert actually focuses on the holes in the structure and how they affect the social capital. Neen, who had come later, who talks about resources, embedded resources, and the mix of the ego, the alter ego, as well as the resources in the form of uh, economic, political, cultural, which are all part of the overall social capital. So now here, when we talk about any social capital, the major kinds of social capital is the relationships, relations of mutual trust. What is the information potential that is existing? What are the norms that can be effective? And what are the appropriate social organizations? And uh, when we talk about any social capital theory, uh, though they talk about this uh, social structure as a good, it can be both an individual good or a public good. And therefore, when we make the theory, it has to be looked at the micro level as, a, as well as at the macro level. Then it can be in an institutionalized manner or a non-institutionalized manner. It can be an open structure where there can be going in, going out or a closed structure. Then one important part of a the social capital theory is the uh, mo morality aspect of it. Things like trust plays a major role in creating that uh, social capital uh, network. Then uh, things like authority and the norms and the formality of the structure 
will define the social capital. Then, if there are any negative effects of social capital that are excluded, those have to be considered. Actually, I'm reminded of the previous presentation of LGBT, where there is an active exclusion from the social capital, which is can be cited as one example. And then, then how social capital can be used to fight inequality, uh, which has also been mentioned in the previous lectures in the last week about health inequality, talking about equity, equality, and inclusion. Then the other thing was uh, this about uh, reciprocity. Then if the character of the social capital is good, then you do not have to invest in it in very highly because the, the maintenance of the cap, the uh, that structure, that character of the social capital will go on because the character itself is good and there is investment from each individual to preserve it. And these are supported by things like trust and uh, other moral entities. And once that builds up, it becomes self-enhancing and cumulative. The other thing I have also no uh, noted down was this related to formal versus informal. And it can also be densely interweaved, like we see it in a family, or it can just be very thin and it may not even be visible. And it can occur in episodes which are like seen in casual acquaintances. Then you can either look inwards or outward looking. When we talk about outward looking, we are talking about these uh, organizations, formal organization, charities, where that pros, the, the premise is to go outward and meet other people in the society to build social capital. And if you are looking inward, it will be probably depending on one particular class, all of who have a similar uh, 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 qualification or interest. And sir, I would like to finish with one last thing about the dimensions of the social capital, which can be structural, relational, and cognitive. When we talk about structural, we are talking about the network ties, like the social network analysis, which can depend again on, which can be present or absent. And if they're present, that can be bonding type or bridging type. And then the next dimension is the relational, where what is the kind of relationships that developed over time through repeated interactions, which could lead to increased trust among the individuals, which is very essential to build up an organizational uh, performance. Then the other is the cognitive dimension where we have all the resources uh, which provide a shared vision and a shared culture among all the members of that, uh, say that organization who build up the social capital together. So this is the thing that I was working on initially. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing the concept of social capital in a very comprehensive way. Now, two quick questions are coming to my mind and I would like to see your response to both the question. First question is, who poses social capital? Because you have been saying that the social structure, social structure. Now, I want to understand that within the social structure, basically, who poses social capital? One. And second is, what is the source of that social capital? Can you elaborate on these two questions? Sir, as I have understood it, mm. an individual has to extend mm. to the other members of the society to call it a social capital. It cannot be an individual, but it can be an individual good or a public good. But an individual first, there is a reciprocity and there is an extension from one individual to another individual. Only then we can say that it is possessed. No, no, no. The question is this, when I'm saying who, that means which social category of people, because there are different social categories who possess this social capital in different uh, magnitude or say in quantity kind of thing. But I would like to know that which social category will possess social capital to the max. Do you have any kind of understanding related to that? Have you developed? That, that can be dependent on the hierarchy and ties. If no, the person no, is in... No, sir. no, no. That, sir. that is why basically we need to understand the perspectives, right? That is why. Because you mentioned names of few thinkers. See, if you look at the contribution made by Bourdieu, then Coleman, then Putnam, actually they have highlighted this question, right? 
Bourdieu looked at social capital as an essential feature of the elites, right? And then basically Coleman said that he somehow uh, presented a different argument. He said that those who are coming from the non-elite section, maybe coming from the deprived section, they can also possess social capital because it ascends, right? It ascends. So because of your specific type of community living, you basically happen to end up with having social capital. That was another important discourse, right? And then we come to basically Putnam. Now Putnam is saying that, that, that the social capital is not a feature of an individual as such, rather it is a feature of a kind of a society. So what kind of society we are living in? If that society is having an increased level of reciprocity, mutuality, trust kind of thing, then in that society, basically everybody will possess some amount of social capital. And that is why he's talking about a declining social capital in American society, right? So knowing about the definitions given by different people is only one dimension. Basically, we need to factor in about the specific mass understanding right so if you look at it from that perspective then you can uh, at, then you can basically develop your own your own argument that okay in indian context we are having basically caste we are having religion we are having ethnic groups we are having different types of uh, communities queer community kind of thing then if we look at these specific social situations then because of uh, on the basis of the existing paradigms which community is supposed to have maximum social capital right and then we can basically proceed further so you are in an initial stage of your research as you pointed out so these were the thoughts which were coming to me and i shared with these things i don't know to what extent this will be helpful to you or whether this will be helpful to you or not at all but these are the ideas that which are coming to my mind and I'm sharing this with you. If you want to respond to this, you can respond. Otherwise, this will be open for all the participants to look into the matter and develop their own insights. But that should be an informed insight. Read about that, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It was useful and I will work on it, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Now, Tariq, Tariq, you have a doubt. Tariq Anwar, what is your doubt? Can you share? Are you here, Tariq Anwar? Not responding. Satham Hussain, are you here? Not responding. Now we have basically seven, eight presenters that basically I'll call them by name. Uh, Dr. Tulika, Tazeeb Anis, Umar, then Nusrat, Dr. Iram, and then uh, Srija and Shivani Patel and uh, Aparna and anybody else, right? Uh, Dr. Iram has already mentioned that she would like to uh, respond to this. So we will start with Dr. Iram. Basically, <coughs> what we are expecting, we are expecting basically your concluding remarks on this uh, one week online course. Why did you attend this course? To what extent you found this relevant? And what suggestions you would like to make, right? Basically, you can, uh, you can make your presentation or your, you can express your views on these three uh, core arguments. Why did you join this course? Was this course relevant for you? And what are your suggestions, right? And of course, you have the freedom to criticize us up to any extent. This is open for you. Since your observation and feedbacks are relevant to us, please come forward. We will start with Dr. Iram and then you can write your name in the chat box so that we can uh, chronolog chronologically arrange the presenters. Okay, so uh, I'm just uh, want to say uh, thanks for uh, give a platform for us as I am the uh, I'm having the background of home science that is so mainly related to the health and nutrition. So it is a kind of a uh, platform for enhancing my knowledge also and uh, also uh, give me the opportunity to uh, give certain kind of uh, presentations and uh, some kind of uh, suggestions in this course. 
and i just want to uh, appreciate the efforts that is made by the number of people first uh, first i would like to uh, say thanks to the gyan that is the global initiative of academic network who started this online course and give the platform to all of us and secondly to our amu who become the platform for this program and organized an online course i uh, mainly the social capital and health in india that is started from the 13 to 19 fab in the department of sociology then i just want to say thanks for the professor mirza asmar beg dean faculty of social science professor mj varsi local coordinator and the, now i ma uh, made uh, i would like to give uh, say thanks and appreciate the effort made by the foreign faculty professor mebako husada and host faculty and course coordinator professor mohammad akram course coordinator co coordinator dr am salehi and thank you for organizing such a great event and also for make all of us as a part of this event your program social capital and health is uh, in india is a platform which added on a great memorable moment in our lives this program was overall well organized and well themed with all the best people accompanied uh, here it was it has been a privilege to be a part of this event along with all the other people present here uh this event clearly shows how well planned and organized this program was and uh, professor mohammad akram and dr mohammad uh, am salehin have executed this event so well and being present here overall there uh, have been so many great interaction sessions on different topics related to the social health health care human development cancer and other life threatening diseases communicable and non communicable diseases in india social movement social capital sanitation nutrition national health policy and so on and each one of us has been able to get connected with less known or unknown people here also a lot a lot of learning and experiences have been shared in this program it has been overall overall an excellent successful event so in these 6 days we spend almost 5 to 6 hours of interaction with more than 80 people so uh, sir such events pro or programs should be regularly planned and conducted so in future so that new researchers and students can get the platform and i would uh, lastly i would like to thanks to everyone who had joined this course and uh, i just want to end my uh, words by saying this jab hausla bana liya uchi udan ka phir dekhna fuzul hai qad aasman thank you sir excellent uh, excellent communication and uh, the concluding part was really amazing uh, but i uh, uh, you know uh, i'm tempted to say one thing over here that It was looking like a formal vote of thanks kind of presentation, and somebody may uh, think that that uh, that I might have su suggested you to present that kind of thing. That was looking more formal. No, we are not looking for uh, that formal kind of thing. Yes, uh, tell us something in an informal way, right? Because you will get a feedback form also from Gyan, right? Uh, this is an important announcement. You will get a feedback uh, form from Gyan, and you have to fill up that. That is a mandatory part, right? I was trying to locate that feedback form, but I could not find it till now. I don't know when and how they will uh, send that feedback form. Maybe they will send to the participant directly, right? So you please uh, go through that feedback form because that will be an important step for completion of this uh, course kind of thing, right? so they have uh, been sending me messages that uh, tell the participants to fill up the feedback form and that will only announce the completion of the course so that is an important thing but yes uh, thank you very much for expressing your views and uh, it is really really only one suggestion so only one suggestion i just want to give that mm -hmm. the timing is not very much uh, relevant to our faculty times because we are engaged in uh, invigilation duties and in department a number of uh, meetings are there so if it possible it should be in the evening time so we can uh, participate it very nicely in it okay iram so basically professor miwako osoda was connected from japan if you are 
basically yeah, 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 this meeting in, during the evening hours then maybe professor nivaku was supposed to uh, remain wake up till mid of night so technically we are basically operating in a uh, world time zone right yeah. yes sir yes sir world time zone that was the most conducive time yes i understand the difficulty some of the student also uh, basically complained that well this is the uh, college time for us it is very difficult for us to join and that is why but this is how the things operate basically this is an open platform right this is an open platform we had announced the timing uh, earlier also right so these are the things these are the compulsion that we have to uh, uh, remain with right so thank you very much for expressing your views and appreciating the efforts made by the institutions right as well thank as you. thank you sir uh, i didn't get responses from the individuals i had mentioned that <coughs> Dr. Tulika, are you here? Tazib, are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm Tulika here, sir. Yes, sir. Tulika, Tulika, or Dr. Yes. Tulika, we would like to listen something from you. Yeah. Something from you. Yes. So, like about um, your talk or like in general? Can you? In general. Point? In general. About the program as such. Okay. So, I think. Um, uh, so as I said, uh, while giving my uh, thanks to Dr. Miyako, I think I like the program in general because uh, for me, it covered many important areas like the history of um, public health policy in India that you today covered. And also the sanitation policies that uh, you cover today. And I am in fact uh, uh, planning to read your book because uh, I have worked some uh, on Safai Karmis in UP. And uh, so that is where I really like those, uh, this historical aspect of these planning and sociological aspect of these planning and policy in India. Um, I personally also like the Miwako's uh, lecture on, as I said, on the policy part where she's talking about different, uh, you know, socialistic approach to health, uh, the Nordic countries experience, the US experience, the UK experience part of it. So personally, the policy component was much more relevant for me because I wasn't well versed in the policy aspect of it. Um, other than that, uh, the social determinant of health, the all these aspects, I had uh, a little bit of idea. So uh, it was kind of reinforcing uh, my own understanding about the public health in India and in general, uh, the health sector uh, globally. Um, but uh, just um, one uh, very kind of um, uh, one uh, expectation that I had when I registered for this uh, this particular course, I thought it will talk about um, the role of social capital. So in, in fact, it was uh, talking more about the social determinants of health. I thought, I mean, that is my pre-assumption that it will talk about so role of social capital in accessing health services in determining health outcome all those aspects which Mimako, of course, uh, covered in terms of, you know, the role of social capital in determining the health outcome of the people. But I was also, uh, you know, I that's why I found this course very interesting that it will talk about the role of social capital in accessing health services. So this is something, a uh, new idea that I have that I got from this course uh, that maybe I will take up in my future research, uh, particularly looking at the role of social capital in accessing health services in India. Um, uh, yeah, so it has been a wonderful, wonderful uh, set of lectures. I really liked it. And I also liked the presentations because, you know, they were coming from very different case studies kind of thing for me. So I also liked the presentations of the participants. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tulika Tripathi for sharing your views. I would like to respond to this in uh, basically a few sentences. See, when we propose the course, then basically this course, there we need to understand the mechanism uh, uh, that the way the course is actually coming to uh, the participants. Initially, we have to propose a course title and then uh, faculty, basically the CV of the faculty, CV of the foreign faculty, CV of the Indian faculty, course coordinates, yes. all those things, right? Then they are basically submitted to Gyan and then Gyan is sending that for a peer review, right? Yes. I, how many persons they are basically sending. Just like our papers are getting peer reviewed, this yeah. is getting peer reviewed. And the reviewer basically suggests some uh, suggestions, right? So when our proposal went for the peer review, then basically they included some new topics. They were oh. the scope of this uh, program. Because the concern is based that this is an open platform learning. See? Yes, yes. It's happening that that anybody can think of joining this course maybe undergraduate student maybe post yeah. 
30 member kind of thing. Right. So that the, I think that, that the reviewers look at it from the perspective of the openness of the course. So instead of keeping it heavy on, yeah. they are making it basically uh, manageable for the general participant. Yeah. Yes. Basically, they make some kind of changes and we have to accommodate those things. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm very delighted to know that there are participants who are interested in understanding the social capital dimension. In that situation, basically, we need to design a specific course related to that. Yes. Thinking mm -hmm. of basically in the time to come to focus on basically those these theoretical things, right? The yeah. these things where researchers, which which the researchers may find more relevant, and basically we will. Uh, uh, that time we will take into consideration that we will have participants only interested in that dimension. This yes. Basically allowing the participants coming from, coming from diverse background, we can keep the participants coming from the specific background. That choice is there with the coordinator. Definitely, I selected the participants. That choice is with me. But this time, this is, this is a learning process and this experience is new for all of us basically. Yes. So yes. this time I remain liberal in the selection of the participants, but being in mind your suggestion and the kind of interaction that we had, I'm yes. sure that next time when we will propose or anybody propose a course like this, he will take into consideration that the participants should come from uh, uh, at least on the similar horizon kind of thing. Yeah. So I think you can also propose just a quick idea. Uh, you can propose it as a series that this was a foundation lecture and based on this, you would like to propose a more specific lecture for those who work in this area. Yeah, uh, kind of. I don't know if Gyan agrees to this, but I think this will be very useful. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. That's a good suggestion. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tulika Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have our chairperson this minute. We have our chairperson, Professor Shiri Shadik Ma'am, present in the conference hall. Basically, see, it is her generosity that today, when there is a national holiday and we are keeping the department open, she came here to give us company and the moral support. Of course, the logistic support and infrastructure support of the department is already here. So um, uh, I would like to say a thank you very much to the chairperson of the department, Professor Shiri Shadik Ma'am, to, who took the pains to come and join the program and see that everything is being conducted smoothly. Uh, Gyan, Basically, people from Gyan have remained connected all through the week. And today, uh, we can uh, say a formal thank to the people coming from Gyan, as well as our local, uh, uh, say, surveillance officer, mm -hmm. <laughs> as well as supporting uh, colleague, Professor Shiri Sadiq, ma'am, uh, for joining us. Uh, ma'am, would you like to come here on the camera? For this? <laughs> because your remarks are very important. So good afternoon to all of you and um, I am, uh, it, uh, this course has been a pleasure and an honor for the department that our colleagues have organized this course and uh, have put in a lot of effort and I'm also very thankful to all the participants who have joined this, who have shown their trust in the department. I am thankful and very grateful for their participation and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Professor Shiri Shadik, ma'am, for your generosity. Now we will uh, basically go to other participants who are interested in sharing their views. Tazi Vanis has already mentioned I will share next. So, Tazi Vanis, please express your views and observations. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, why the question was, why did you join? So, I would like to tell you that I joined this course. So, my knowledge on this delivered topics enhanced, which is successfully been done. And from the last few five to six days uh, through these online lectures, uh, this session has given us immense knowledge on diverse topics related to health and healthcare and beyond that also. So I think this session will definitely help us and those students who are willing to join research in future 
as uh, already in our sessions resource persons have talked about a lot about emerging issues which need our attentions uh, so secondly i think this session will also improve our social capital like networking uh, as we have come uh, interacted with different faculties like tulika ma'am aparna ma'am farah ma'am and other uh, iram ma'am and other participants who have shared their view so it will be you know interesting to uh, be connected with this kind of persons and lastly sir i would like to extend my heartful gratitude to both the conveners for hosting and making this event successful thank you so much sir and one more suggestion sir i think uh, this kind of you know this kind of uh, platform should be given offline so that we can get more and more fruitful uh, knowledges offline yes sir okay thank you sir okay thank you tazi are see uh, some kind of advantages as well as limitations of every situation when we are having this in online mode there is advantage that many participants coming from different parts of the country are remaining connected so that could be the advantage perhaps had we been offline they would not have joined this right so that could have been a disadvantage of this but you know uh, this online mode initially when gan programs were proposed way back in 2019 or i think 18 then those are in the offline mode but it's because of the covid that things actually changed a bit and now the foreign <coughs> faculty basically uh, we got a final approval for this to, this program in 2000 uh, december 19 but we had scheduled the program in the month of march 2020 but we all know that in march 2020 <coughs> we had covid so it got basically uh, cancelled at that point of time and then we were not aware of what may happen to this it was only 2021 late 21 that we got some kind of understanding that this program may continue right the, the, the country the political economy everything got uh, affected by that the policies programs everything right and then in 22 basically when we got confirmation then we basically were given the choice to conduct it in an online mode and offline mode and then the foreign faculty was not basically mentally prepared for this because you have when you have to make an international visit you have to plan in 6 months advance or 8 months in advance so that's what technically not possible for us so that is why we had this program in an online mode i was not supposed to share all these things with the participants but because you raised the question that's why i am answering that there is a whole process mechanism behind the event the way that things take place is a uh, lot of uh, basically the nuanced things uh, which play very important role and as it was pointed out by that uh, dr tulika she mentioned that that she uh, found it interesting to know the historical background of the policy and all so many things basically that is very important if you look at medicine and if you go through the literature on history of medicine you'll find very interesting story every medicine that basically we are exposed to as of now has its own trajectory and history everything right so as a student of history it will not be possible for them to study all these things but as a student of sociology or social science when you have a specialized area then if you go through the history of that then that is basically very interesting that is very insightful right so i just shared the the small history of this program also and the basically happening of this event also thank you very much for expressing your views sir so sorry for uh, interruption yes. sir tarik sir prasan sir yeah tarik yes tarik please speak sir i am prasan sir today during taking attendance i was uh, eating sir Tarik, what do you want to say? So I'm present, sir. Today, today class. Yes, yes, you are present. I'm saying you are present. Ah, uh, you want to make any presentation or any comment and any uh, any observation? No, sir. No, sir. No presentation today. Why don't you make? Basically, I am saying some person is absent, so that he or she should unmute himself or herself and say something. We all are eager to listen to all the. Actually, I am listening to your course, sir. So, I am uh, I am uh, gaining knowledge, sir, from this course. I didn't uh, the idea to make presentation. Uh, in okay. future, I will make it, sir. I make it uh, do, sir. You are making it very good, even now, sir. Right? You are making it very good now. Right? So, in yes, future, sir. you will learn many things. But even today, you have an opportunity to say few more sentences. Right? Say, you can speak out.
ओके फाइन नाउ अपर्ण आर यू एयर शिवानी पटेल आर यू एयर श्रीजा आर यू सर थैंक यू Okay, welcome, Sujay. Umar, are you here? Oh, a very good afternoon, sir. Hmm, good afternoon. I'm Umar Khan from Department of Sociology, sir. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for that five days uh, course that uh, six days, Umar. Six. Six days. So it's a six days course that are uh, that is very informative and thought provoking, and this course helps. me a lot in understanding a perspective or developing a perspective of health and specific specifically how does the social health impacts or have their role in maintaining the health for instance it helps us in understanding the basically we all understand the perspective of health on a medical through the lens of the medical science pers this course helps me to understand it on a ground of social capital that how the patients of cancers in spite of getting medical treatment also facing some sorts of issues related to their environment or from the social the positive and negative impact on their health from the social capital the other part that enlightened us is all about the sources of health data in india that session on sources of health data in india helps me to understand to get the data in a very authentic or a substantial data that can help us to understand that what kinds of policies were implemented in a country or the way we can deal with the situations the, if any kind of unprecedented situations or like covid-19 happened so how does it helps to cope up from that situation so i would like to thank the ministry of education gn program and specifically the faculty members who enlightened us in an informative way from the courses for and from that courses so thank you very much sir thank you umair and nusrat firdaus yeah nusrat please unmute yourself and express yourself good afternoon sir good afternoon uh, sir so i just show a gratitude uh, first of all i really thankful of this platform and i really appreciate of your effort and all the faculty members professor mohammad akram and professor dr mohammad salehin and also foreign faculty of uh, miwaka hasuda ma'am uh, and also and most important technical members also who make this platform a level of knowledgeable and i learned so much from this platform and get new insights for my research work and that's all thank you so much sir thank you nusrat thank you very much and then is there any other member who wants to come on record and make uh, her observations public because i know that that everybody is having an opinion everybody is having an observation so we are keeping those opinions and observations personal confined to us and sometimes when an opportunity is given then we also make those opinions and observations public so it's time for all of you to make your opinion and observations public do you want to come forward and make use of this opportunity sir i would like to uh, please may i yeah please uh sir uh with uh before joining this course i was uh, i was already very eager to learn so many things but honestly to be very true uh i have learned a lot uh, with these sessions in uh, different sessions and uh, uh, uh 
it was very truthful for me uh, to come uh, and join these sessions which were uh, uh, which were uh, which were very informative for me and this added to my knowledge uh, a lot very much uh, and i am very thankful to the team uh, as a whole team if i talk about aligarh muslim university you never su surprise me by your efforts because i have been uh, in many of the uh, conferences and seminars that were already hosted um, by the amu department of sociology in the previous years i have been part and parcel of that as well but uh, i am uh, very very thankful to the whole team of the department of sociology especially professor mohammed akram sir uh, and uh, dr solihin sir as well and the uh, foreign and uh, foreign um, foreign delegate ma'am uh, Pro uh, professor mevasuki mevasuki ma'am uh, a uh, very very enlightenment and very very fruitful for all of us to join this gyan course thank you so much thank you thank you very much sir thank you farah thank you very much so uh, uh, um, last time i would like to call these names uh, aparna are you here or want to share something else or anybody else i, I otherwise i do have many things to share okay so i will start but before that i would like to uh, request dr swalihin sir to uh, basically share his observations and then i have several other things to share with all of you right so sir uh, the message is quite loud and all the participants literally appreciating our efforts so i i literally extend my gratitude to the participants who literally come forward and literally have an active participation in the program and uh, i literally congratulate the uh, course coordinator and the host faculty professor mohammad akram uh, i know sir how much energy and uh, literally you put in in this program to make it practically feasible and uh, this is the outcome that literally we are appreciating but i know that how much he has been involved in just making this program uh, possible or behind the curtain he has uh, done a lot about it and uh, i literally congratulate him and all the participants and uh, literally uh, we are going to have more productive academic engagements so uh, i'm thankful to you sir literally i i wish to have more uh, engagements like thank you very much dr swarin thank you for expressing uh, your honest feelings and sharing platform <laughs> basically this journey you know uh, as i Uh, start as i expressed earlier this journey started way back in 2019 when the local coordinator of aligarh muslim university invited me to submit this proposal and that time i was not having a clarity <coughs> this, but he insisted me a lot basically i must say i must matlab be feeling thankful to the local coordinator professor m j warsi sahab because he insisted a lot that please you make a proposal i was not free mentally and you know that departmental activities actually uh, don't give you much time to think over a new idea this gyan was a new idea and i was not mentally prepared but he promised me to offer of support and truly he extended all support so this journey started basically then and then basically the most important part was to take the consent from the foreign faculty and that time it was basically an offline program that means we should approach to a foreign faculty who is showing his or her willingness to come physically to this part of the world stay with us for a week or something more than that and then you know that is not a, such an easy task that is a very difficult task right but uh, professor mivako hosada very willingly gave her consent and then she helped me a lot in preparing the course right some of the topics were suggested by her you know uh, professor mivako hosada she has her degrees from harvard also she is a great uh, academician in the domain of public health she has her publications in the lancet lancet is considered as the most reputed publication in the field of health right so getting her consent was not an easy job let me share with all of you it was not an easy job 
but as uh, as i have shared otherwise also that because we were working together in the international sociological association in the uh, common uh, research committee and later on we have worked on another platform that is asia pacific sociological association so because of our associations in those platforms that she gave her consent willingly then basically covid created a trauma for all of us and we all are aware of these things personally i was uh, suffering from this so i have a first hand experience of this also but anyway this journey continued and then when we were supposed to actually give it a physical format then dr swaleen came as a big support to me because there are so many technical aspects there are so many official permissions there are so many official engagements and then remaining available basically for 6 to 7 hours a day and taking care of the entire technical issues we are basically very much thankful to the technical team the technical support that we are getting from uh, mr habib sahab of course this is a paid kind of thing but because the program has provided us some kind of resources to take care of these things but he is supporting it in a personal way he is remaining present over here for 5 6 hours day to day basis this is a massive support so i am placing my gratitude to him on record also because otherwise this kind of online program would not have been possible uh, with a minimum technical uh, uh, glitches kind of thing so this is wonderful thing wonderful support coming then uh, most important thing is the support that we got from the uh, leadership of the university that is from the vice chancellor and pro vice chancellor as you all have seen pro vice chancellor uh, professor mohammad gulrez sahab was personally present during that uh, inaugural program and he had extended his all kind of support so that type of thing is not possible without getting this kind of uh, support from the institution then dean faculty of social sciences basically mirza asmar beg sahab wonderful support from him and then of course we just talked about this chair person of the department <coughs> professor shiri shadik ma'am she remained present during this entire program and extended all kind of support whether that was related to logistic or in terms of ideas or execution or the manpower kind of support all support she extended and more than willing to extend any other support in this uh, in the execution of the course but yes the support and the companionship that i'm getting from the co coordinator dr mohammad swalin sir that's a truly uh, uh, matlab historic kind of thing because because we are not always that fortunate to get this kind of support this kind of companionship not only in the execution but also at the level of the dissemination of the ideas wherever i stop my things he is picking up it from there only whenever wherever he is stopping i can pick up from there only so that kind of basically matching of the wavelength at intellectual level that is something that you don't get very easily right and that is brilliant so my heartiest thank to dr mohammad salim sir and we come to the most important part basically some of the participants with whom we are interacting for the first time and it is appearing that that we are acquainted with them for a longer period of time the kind of basically uh, coming into the common domain or having the common denominator and people coming from different background somebody coming from economics somebody coming from home science somebody coming from any other background kind of thing a uh, med medical sciences also that shows the power of research that shows the power of intellectual understanding that that background that you are coming from doesn't matter if you are looking at the issue in a in, in a scientific way in a systematic way and if you are endeavoring for an intellectual uh, widening of the horizon then you will get support from different people and it won't take much time right so uh, this program is a live example of this and i am very much tempted to keep the whatsapp group alive you know we have created a whatsapp group and i am very tempted to keep that whatsapp group alive so that we can have this interaction in the time to come right because otherwise it happens that we create a whatsapp group for a specific for a program and after the completion of the program we close we had three whatsapp group for this program and two of 
those groups we have already closed but i'm not uh, inclined to close this program i'll leave it up to the participants if they want to leave the group they can voluntarily leave the group but not now after completion of the course you are yet to get your certificate there are few formalities <coughs> that you are yet to complete basically you have to upload your assignment in the google classroom then you have to uh, submit the feedback form some candidates have suggested some kind of name correction kind of thing you have to undergo these and then you have to receive the certificate till then officially this group will exist right but once we have closed all these basically official procedures after that it will be your choice to remain in that group or not and then one last thing basically the intellectual platforms that we have basically uh, those who are already in academics or those who are research students they know that that there are several uh, intellectual or academic platforms we have been talking about international sociological association in india we have several academic platforms like indian sociological society just like that there is an economic uh, society what is that indian economic association a kind of thing is there some of our colleagues are associated with in every discipline you have some of those platform so if you are not associated with any of those academic platform then this is the high time for you to remain engaged with those platforms because that is your social capital you get to know so many things you know i would like to uh, share with you that there is one association that is known as indian association of social science and health right some of my research scholars have already uh, uh, got associated with that and they have uh, shared they have made their presentations that's a very uh, professional association right committed to the field of health anybody who has who, who might not have heard about this i'm telling you please join that indian association of social science and health although that is dominated by the people coming from economics but 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 basically all people who are interested in the area of health find due place there i learned a lot there i attended more than seven or eight con conferences organized by indian association of social science and health and i appreciate all the people because they they made me to think over each and every word each and every terminology that i am making use of and they ensured that that whatever is coming out from your mouth that should be meaningful that should be purposeful that should be thoughtful otherwise uh, this intellectual space uh, is basically sometimes very flexible but sometimes it is very rigid also if you are saying something and you are not meaning then you may have to witness a brutal criticism also right so i have faced some of those criticism as well as many advices on these platforms so these are the platforms where we grow and i'll suggest you all to join i have joined many such uh, associations and uh, academic bodies and i'm sure i i know it that how helpful these are basically when you suffer suffer when you feel suffocating and in one place or the other then the kind of acquaintances that you have on different forms they give you the breathing space so take benefit of that and that is what is basically social capital also that is what is this is how we can enhance our social capital also so make use of those things if you have that research thing in you in your genes in your blood then that kind of association networking will give you a kind of lifeline sort of thing so uh, before we close i would like to express my formal gratitude to iit kharagpur and all the people remaining associated with this gyan program they have been responding to our queries our questions and i could have seen their presence in the program right today is a national holiday holiday so perhaps they have not joined but every day i could see the gyan logo in the list of the participants and that was really surprising for me that that they are taking care of the program to the extent that they are joining it and uh, having the first hand experience also and finally last but not the least i would like to talk about two things first aligarh muslim university wonderful university central university one of the premier university and known in the intellectual world for the kind of space it is providing to the faculty members and the students right this kind of intellectual endeavor endeavor is not possible unless we get the kind of freedom liberty and support from the system
So we are getting that kind of support from the system for having this kind of programs. See, this is a holiday and we are sitting in the department opening the lecture in the conference room and arranging the program. This is, this is the kind of support that basically we are looking forward. And then the Ministry of Education for having this kind of basically program, innovative program, which will certainly help in widening the dimensions of education, the formal education, as well as the non-formal and informal education. This is basically one mechanism which gives a strength to all those alternative discourses. And you know, I, I would like to share with you that I'm also keenly interested in the domain of education, basically. Sociology of education is my second area of preference or choice. And uh, basically there we look, we, when, there we talk about the constructivist approach, which says that there is a two-way learning kind of thing where you participate in the learning process and there is a social construction of knowledge and social construction of education. So basically the Ministry of Education is really interested in making education uh, not only a two-way process, rather multi, uh, um, multi-dimensionality, creating the multi-dimensionality in the educational discourses, because these open platforms are very helpful in sharing our idea. The concept of credit bank, the concept of open elective, the concept of having uh, uh, credits, basically earning credits. Some of the participants are earning credit here, right? Some of you may not be aware of this, but some of the participants are earning credit here because of the kind of the, the, the curricula that those universities or institutions are having. So these are all uh, giving us you uh, a kind of a, a grand kind of experience. And I'm feeling a very humbled at this point that, that, uh, that we made it successful, uh, the, the, the continuous effort that we put in right from 2019 and the, so many people, so many institutions involved and engaged in this, right? All these things are coming to the culmination point and uh, so a big thank you to all of you. Uh, although we will not have this class anymore in this particular course, but our communication will remain continued in the WhatsApp group and the Google Classroom board. And if necessitated, I will have a personal meeting with the participant because I don't know about what kind of uh, situation may come. Right, maybe some technical requirement remain unfulfilled. In that situation, I'll again send you a message. We can have another formal meeting, right? So with these kind of uh, observations and a big thank you to all the participants, all people to Dr. Swalehin and all the names I have mentioned and definitely to Professor Miwako Hosoda who is not present in this meeting, but our sincere gratitude to her. Right, and definitely through the family members because all families have suffered during this period because when, when one person is remaining engaged in one program continuously, then definitely the family members are uh, somehow getting adversely affected because of that kind of engagement. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much, Habibai. Uh, if there is any quick comment, anybody who is very much willing to make any quick comment, he or she can make a comment. Otherwise, we'll close the program. We are getting very thank you uh, messages. Yes, uh, we are also saying thank you to all of you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The man is a word. Take one more, sir. Take a chili close. Yes, please. 